So after the superior cerebellar artery, the basal artery uh, bifurcates into the left and right PCAs at the basilar tip. So this is the basilar tip. Basilar tip can form aneurysms too. Often these days those are coiled. Um, these, these are the first vessels in posterior circulation that are supertentorial, as we can see here. So everything underneath them is going beneath the level of the, of the tentorium. Here's that free edge of the tentorium. Here's that SCA wrapped thing around. Remember, superior cerebellar. So think superior surface of the cerebellum. It's wrapping around, going on top of the superior surface of the cerebellum over here. And here's the PCA, which is coming up above the tentorium. We're going to take a look at its supply in a minute. Also, the PCA, of course, uh, you know, anastomosis with the posterior communicating artery, which we see here coming off of that C7 communicating internal carotid, which is coming up, giving off uh, both the posterior communicating anterior choroidal and then bifurcating in laterally into the MCA, anteriorly into the ACA, and those two are connected by the anterior communicating artery. So the PCA comes off um, as the terminal branch of the basilar, basilar, lateral to the basilar tip, and is both superior to cranial nerve three and the tentorium. It's, um, it's super tentorial, of course, like we said, and it's also posterior to the chiasm. So let's see, we can see this here from a superior and a lateral perspective. Um, you can see SCA is underneath three, three is coming up and down. Remember we say always three is going over that posterior clinoid, medial to the free edge of the tentorium into that ocular motor triangle. And then all of that is occurring uh, posterior to the optic chiasm where we find two. So let's take a look at that. What does that, what does that look like? So this is a lateral perspective. This is a right side um, where this is that free edge of the tentorium. We're above that free edge. So we're sort of, you know, we're sort of looking super tentorially. Um, and here is our carotid. This is our C7 communicating carotid, right? And we can see the carotid, carotid is giving off that posterior communicating artery. It's coming and it's attaching anastomosing with the posterior cerebral artery. Here we have the basilar trunk coming up, basilar tip. Uh, this is the PC on the right side, PC on the left side over here. And underneath it, you don't really see the origin right here, but it's right here. That's the superior cerebellar artery. So see, superior cerebellar artery is underneath third nerve, infratentorial, going around to the superior surface of the cerebellum. I wish I'd put a poll question in before about this, but what do we think this is right here? Well, this is obviously fourth nerve. Why is it fourth nerve? Uh, not only is it immediately below three, but it's also coming from much more posterior. The fourth nerve has that, that really posterior origin as it wraps around the midbrain um, on its way to join that free edge of the tentorium. And then the bone we would expect to see, of course, right underneath three here is that posterior clinoid process. If I was gonna retract the tentorium a little bit here, I'd see that ocular motor triangle as third nerve is exiting the dura. What am I looking at over here? Well, this is, uh, this is the right, this is the optic chiasm. This is the right uh, uh, optic nerve. Um, in the middle would be the laminal terminalis. If we followed that all the way back up and we, we went through everything, we'd be in the third ventricle, the optic recess of the third ventricle. And uh, if we follow this, here's our communicating ICA. If it's going, it's bifurcating laterally into the MCA, anteriorly into the ACA, and we may just get a rare glimpse of that, uh, I shouldn't say rare, glimpse of that anterior communicating artery over here. So the part of the brain we mentioned briefly last time over here um, is the uncus. Um, so in, you know, an uncle herniation, this can come down and, and compress the, the third nerve right here. Um, I think that's pretty much everything on this picture. SCA, PCA, PCOM, yeah, that's everything. So, um, just um, here's the PCA in full, but a brief note before we continue, we would expect to find that fourth nerve origin back here. And that fourth nerve wraps around following the free edge over here where we're higher than it so we, in this image. So we don't see it, but this is the direction it follows. We're also looking up at this picture. Um, so uh, this is uh, third nerve right here. 
um, their second nerve, that's the pituitary stalk. Um, but anyway, this is just to give you an idea of the of PCA territory. So here we see the full PCA. We can see it again, it comes off uh, the basal artery, connects with uh, anterior circulation via the posterior communicating artery, and then it turns uh, posteriorly um, around the uh, around the midbrain brainstem. Um, here is the P1 segment, and then we have the P2 segment and the P3 and P4 segments which supply the cortex. The P1 and P2 segments give off some branches which supply the thalamus. You can see that in a little more detail. Um, actually, you can see that here. Uh, and uh, yeah, we can, we can see P3 and P4 closer here along with their branches, the thalamus and the occipital lobe. Thalamus, we can see that here, as well as giving rise to the posterior choroidal artery. So before we finish up uh, quickly, this is um, a vertebral basilar angiogram. This is what's known as a town view, meaning it's from above and in front. It's showing the vertebral basilar arterial system. Um, and you can quite clearly see the very large aneurysm arising or large aneurysm arising from the bifurcation um, of, of the basal, of the, I'm sorry, the, the basilar tip right here, a basilar tip uh, aneurysm. So let's follow this up from the bottom. Um, so we, here we have our verts, right? So we're looking up and down so we can see the, the length of uh, the SCA and PCA a little bit better. But what would, else would we expect to find around these different levels? Well, first we have the vertebral arteries coming into the dura, coming up. So we would expect the clivus to be around here. Here's our, our, um, our pica coming out. So we can imagine that it's interacting with 9, 10, 11 as they enter the jugular foramen. As we move up, again, vertebral basilar junction in relationship to the clivus. We then have the ica, which comes out and it's forming its loop. So we can also imagine this is about the level of seven, seven and eight entering the IAC. As we come up higher, we reach the SCA. So remember, SCA is going to be beneath the tentorium, beneath the third nerve, coming around to, to supply that superior surface of the cerebellum. And then as we come up a little bit further, we encounter this big, uh, this big ball, which is in this case a basilar tip aneurysm. And then we can see the... Um, the basal artery becoming the uh, each of the posterior cerebral arteries as they go up and back. And we can see this on a lateral view as well. So here's, remember, it's, this is our suboccipital segment coming up of the vert. It's coming up, it's going along that sulcus arteriosus. It's curving around. It's entering the dura. And it's... Uh, it's coming up here, here, and now here's where the pica comes out. Remember, here um, uh, comes up, and it, this is that anterior, anterior medullary segment. Um, in this case, the pica, uh, we don't see it fully, or it doesn't take on, you know, it, it's the most common course, but I don't think we see the more caudal, caudal aspects because we see this area as it comes up underneath the cerebellar hemisphere. It comes around with those cortical branches that comes underneath and around. Um, and then here we have the vertebral basilar junction, forming of the vertebral, uh, I'm sorry, the basilar artery. Um, and then we can see, we don't really see the SCA as much here, but we see the, and we don't really see the ICA that much either. But we do see the PCA um, as it comes out. And this is where the basilar tip would be. So now, I mean, this image should be pretty clear. You should be able to really uh, navigate this image with these tools with ease um, and use each of the, whether it's bone or soft tissue or dura or nerve or vessel, you can use these as clues to tell you something about the surrounding, right? So we know here's that posterior communicating artery, right? We know if this is the level of third nerve, then we're gonna be near that free edge of the tentorium, but underneath it, and SCA should be in our proximity. Um, you know, as we move down, we see the ICA, we know we're gonna be around the level of seven and eight. Um, 
and, and so on. Um, and we can see pretty much, again, everything here from two to three uh, to where four would be, five, six, um, seven, eight, and, and so on. And here's our PCA coming back around. Um, and then this is, again, the same, same thing, but more lateral view. Here's, you know, here's three, actually, let's start from the top. Here's one, two, three, fourth nerve. Fifth nerve, Meckel's cave. Sixth nerve, Dorello's canal. Seven and eight into the IAC. Nine, 10, 11 into the jugular foramen. 12 into the hypoglossal canal. Here the, you can see the origin of the pica. Here's that, uh, uh, probably the ica. Um, third nerve going into the octomotor triangle here. Um, second nerve going into the optic canals. This is our anterior communicating artery connecting the right and left ACA going back to the carotid. Remember the carotid is entering the dura here through that distal dural ring, coming up forming ACA and the MCA. Um, what else do we see here? Um, we didn't go into the venous architecture much. Um, we don't really see superior uh, petrosal sinus. This is where we'd expect to find that inferior petrosal sinus. Um, and that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at this. This is a nice video showing a lot of perforators from the BNI. Um, and you can see the, the extent of the perforator network, especially around anterior circulation. So, you know, when you think of vessels, you often think that they're very, you know, if you cut the arachnoid, you can move them around a lot. But in most cases, they're quite adhered um, to uh, the parenchyma uh, with all these perforators. So here again, here's the, the carotid coming up underneath the anterior clinoid process, um, coming up intradural, PCOM, going back to that PCA. Here's the SCA. We'd expect to find third nerve here above the edge of the tent. There's third nerve. There's that posterior clinoid process, which is usually always near third nerve. Here's the cella right here, where we'd find the pituitary. Here's the ophthalmic coming off of the um, carotid going into the optic canal. And from this perspective, we can see the vertebral basilar junction, the basilar artery coming up. And that's pretty much cranial circulation. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.